in the month of October, we should be focusing in our spiritual lives on the Holy Rosary. Because this is something that we need to be attached to and devoted to if we want to save our souls. Of course, we should say the Rosary all year round. But we devote the month of October in a special way to the Rosary, to remind us about it and to learn about it, to study it, and to think about it. And this is the practice of the Church. Of course, we're supposed to practice all of the virtues all year round, but the Church in her wisdom takes a a part of each year to give special emphasis to different devotions and, and different mysteries of our faith in different times of the year so that we get a little bit of a renewal at least once a year in every part of our holy religion. And so for the month of October, our assignment this month is to renew our love and devotion and zeal in saying the rosary. Now, I've been reading a very interesting book on the rosary, I think one of the very best books that we have on the subject, which is The Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort. And I wanted to talk about some of the things that he has in there today. Uh, and it is a, it's kind of a short book. It's more of like a large pamphlet. But it's completely packed with instruction and in, information on this beautiful prayer and, and beautiful examples as well. And those of you that want to renew your fervor in devotion to the rosary... That is the best I can give you. The best advice I can give you is just spend a few minutes reading a a page or two out of this book every day. It'll help you a lot. And you can even even download it for free on the internet if you don't have it right now. One thing I found very interesting as I've been reading it again is the way St. Louis talks about how powerful this devotion is with people that really need God's grace. He has a lot of examples of people who are are terrible sinners or who have some sort of terrible uh, calamity or problem in their life or in one way or another need a powerful means of grace at their disposal. And he gives many examples of of parishes and, and convents, religious houses, monasteries, and other groups of people that were absolutely renewed once they started saying the rosary. He tells a story about a, a Danish priest who used to give retreats in his parish once in a while. And he would preach terrifying sermons about fire and brimstone and, and the punishments of sin. And the people in the parish didn't pay all that much attention to it. And he got almost nowhere. So he decided to try something else. And the next retreat that he had, he asked them to just pray the rosary instead. That's what he talked about for the retreat. And sure enough, in a short amount of time, he saw a lot of improvement in the parish. Within a short amount of time, people started going to confession regularly, started living more spiritual lives and abandoning their sins. And St. Louis de Montfort himself confirms this. He says that he would also, in his early priesthood, would preach just the regular retreats, and it it helped the people for a while. People were converted for a while, but then uh, a while later, a year or two later, he would go back to the same place again, and he would see that they were back where they started. And he started preaching retreats on the rosary in parishes, and then he said after he would go back to the same place a year or two later, the people had made progress. They were more devout. They were more spiritual. He would walk down the street and hear all the people around him talking about heavenly things. Now, it's very important to remember that it's not so much the length of the prayers that we say that's important or, or the amount of time primarily that we spend that determines how pleasing it is to God, but rather it's the fervor with which we say it that is really important. Even one single Hail Mary that is said very devoutly and with great love is more valuable than than 50 Hail Marys or 100 that are are said uh, in lukewarmness. 
And a lot of Catholics say the rosary every day, at least the five mysteries, and yet we see that a lot of them stay attached to their sins and, and don't make a lot of progress in the spiritual life. So what, what is the explanation for this? It must be that they're not saying the rosary the way they should. So first of all, in order to say the rosary properly, to get these, these wonderful benefits from it, we have to be in the state of grace, or at the very least, if we're in the state of sin, we have to have a complete rejection of all serious sin, a firm intention not to commit any more and to confess our sins as soon as we can. If we love mortal sin, obviously our prayer will not be pleasing to God at all. And then also we have to say the rosary with attention. We have to keep our attention on God. We can't be giving in to willful distractions when we're supposed to be praying. And in fact, that's even a sin to be, to be willfully distracted at all. And it makes no sense for us to expect God to listen to what we're saying if we aren't even listening to what we're saying ourselves. Of course, we can't say a whole rosary without any distractions at all that, that come in against our will. In fact, it would be difficult to say even a whole Hail Mary without our minds going to something else. But the point is that we can't give in to these distractions. We have to do everything that we can to keep our mind where it belongs, on the mystery that we're, we're meditating on in that decade. So when we begin our rosary, we have to put ourselves in the presence of God. We have to make an intention to re remove all of our, our worldly cares and thoughts and worries and desires just completely out of our heads and out of our hearts. We have to leave them out and devote that time completely to just the thought of God. But of course, this is something very difficult for us to do, and, and the devil knows that. And, and the devil knows how to interfere with our rosary. And before we begin the rosary, a lot of times the devil will make us feel like tired or, or bored or not interested in it to, to try to get us not to even start. And if we manage to overcome that temptation and we do get started, a lot of times he will continue to, to make it as hard as he can for us and put distractions in our heads and, and tell us also sometimes that we're not thinking about what we're doing anyway, so the whole thing is a waste of time. But all of this is just a temptation. We shouldn't give in to it. And, and even if our imagination is distracted for the entire time that we're saying the rosary, as long as we try to get rid of our distractions when they come in, we're still pleasing God. And we should remember that the best rosary is the one that earns us the most merit in the eyes of God. And there is more merit that we gain when we're praying and, and fighting against distractions and praying when it's difficult than when it's easy. And... Prayer is always difficult when it's when it's it's uh, we have a lot of distractions, and so that's actually more more pleasing in the sight of God. And we shouldn't be discouraged by the difficulty of, of saying the Rosary. It really is the best spiritual exercise that we can do, apart from attending the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And we have the testimony of many many saints about this. St. Augustine said that there's no spiritual exercise that's more fruitful or more useful to our salvation than to think about the sufferings of our Lord, as we do in the Sorrowful Mysteries. St. Albert the Great, another doctor of the Church, he learned from our Lord in a revelation that if someone just thinks about the passion of our Lord, he gets more merit than if he had fasted on bread and water every Friday for a whole year, or if he had scourged himself once a week until he started bleeding, or if he recited the entire book of the Psalms every single day, which would take several hours to do. 
So that means that when we say the rosary, and, and particularly when we're saying the sorrowful mysteries, according to this revelation, we're, we're, we're doing something very pleasing in the sight of God and very helpful for our souls. Our Lady said to Blessed Alan, who is one of the great apostles of the rosary, that besides the holy sacrifice of the Mass, there is no greater devotion than that of the rosary. And when St. Dominic used to hear confessions, he usually gave the rosary as a penance, or at least a, a part of it. Even such a, a great and, and learned and holy man like St. Dominic couldn't think of any more powerful prayer or more, more um, efficacious remedy against sin and any greater act of penance to give his penitents than to, make, than to say the rosary and um, help them from falling in the future. So if we have any habits of sin that we're trying to overcome, and we don't seem to be making a lot of progress, if we're becoming discouraged, we should try to say the rosary with as much devotion as possible every day and ask for God's help. Ask God to reform our lives. St. Louis de Montfort says that in the chronicles of St. Dominic and, and of many other priests who have preached the rosary over the centuries since then, there are many, many cases of people who are completely sunk in, in terrible sins and who didn't want to turn against their sins, but just in order to please someone else, maybe um, they just said the rosary every day, and eventually they were converted. The Holy Rosary teaches people about the virtues of our Lord and Our Lady. It teaches people to practice mental prayer and to imitate our Lord. It teaches people to go to the sacraments regularly and to attain the, the, the Christian virtues. And it also gives people many indulgences at the same time. Our Lady told Blessed Alan that the Rosary gives people ten separate blessings. She said that through the Rosary, sinners are forgiven, souls that thirst are refreshed, those that are fettered have their bonds broken, those who weep find happiness, those who are tempted find peace, the poor find help, religious are reformed, those who are ignorant are instructed. The living learn to overcome pride, and the dead have their pains relieved when the living say the rosary on their behalf. And I want to close today with some beautiful words that Our Lady herself said to the same Blessed Alan. She said, I want people to have devotion to my rosary, to have my son's grace and blessing during their lifetime and at their death. And after their death, I want them to be free from all slavery so that they will be like kings wearing crowns and with scepters in their hands, enjoying eternal glory. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.